Greetings, great bodhisattvas. Hope we're all well tonight. The first time I heard the phrase, in these uncertain times on a television commercial, I thought to myself, ah, how sympathetic. Well, these advertisers know that people are hurting and they know that people are uncomfortable and fearful. So I thought, you know, that was very nice. And then after the 80th time I heard it or thereabouts, after my eyes and ears had totally glazed over, uh, it started feeling like the sympathy was being commodified so that fearful people would buy more stuff from these supposedly sympathetic merchants and that would restore to them some sense of wholeness. It would send some predictability to that to them. Um, it would make them more certain. And then more importantly, it dawned on me, wait, when are times certain? Impermanence is one of the three Dharma seals, right? Everything is changing, changing, changing. But if everything is changing, is that any different from being still? Is it same as still? Is it different from still? Everything is perfectly still, perfect as it is, even when that's uncomfortable. And as it changes from moment to moment, all this good bad is just made by our thinking. Everything is in constant motion, then how is that changing? That's the baseline, right? Always changing. There's no change from that. If we were in a world where there were only light, sun's out all the time, no clouds, just sun, it's light out all the time. Would we even need a word for dark? Would we even need a word for light for that matter? This changing is the ground from which everything else springs. We could create mental concepts out of it if we want, but that doesn't change it from being in a state of flux, in a constant state of movement, which as I said, if all we have is changing, if all we have is movement, if all we have is atoms constantly spinning around, why do we think that there could possibly be something called certain or still or unchanging or permanent? Richard Clark, who is, uh, a favorite translator of mine and uh, had been a local resident. And in fact, uh, in a lot of used bookstores in this area, I kept picking out these books and I would find his notes in them because after he died, his Sangha distributed his used books to all these bookstores. So it was kind of interesting finding out that the guy whose translation I liked so much, I was reading his other books and his handwriting was absolutely awful. So I couldn't like crib anything from them, any of his notes. He translated uh, third Zen patriarch Sen San's uh, Jin Jin Ming. Do not remain in the dualistic state. Avoid such pursuits carefully. If there is even a trace of this and that, of right and wrong, the mind essence will be lost in confusion. 
although all dualities come from the one, do not be attached even to this one. Jitao uh, Jikian, uh, a great Chinese sage uh, in the Kaodong literate uh, lineage, wrote something called Emerging of Difference in Unity. This is translated by J.C. Cleary. Each sense in every field interact and do not interact. When interacting, they also merge. Otherwise, they remain in their own states. Forms are basically different in material and appearance. Sounds are fundamentally different in pleasant or harsh quality. The four gross elements return to their own natures like a baby taking to its mother. Fire heats, wind moves, water wets, earth is solid. Eye and form, ear and sound, nose and smell, tongue and taste. Thus in all things, the leaves spring from the root. The whole process must return to the source. So, of course, these times are uncertain. They're always uncertain. Uh, it's just become more readily apparent because we're paying more attention now. We've created this panic and fear legitimately. But we could always be in this state of panic and fear based on the uncertainty of life. Everything that's conditioned is characterized by emptiness, right? We can think that, we can say we understand it, we can conceptualize it. But usually one day just slides into the next. And even when the unexpected comes along, it's still easy enough to let it slide by with no major impact. Oh, I was planning on bicycling today and then it started to rain. Okay, no big deal. But when the uncertainty revolves around millions of people dying, it's a little bit more noticeable. Water is wet. When the water cooler runs out of water and it's dry, it's no big deal. When we're in a situation, situation like we're in now, it's more than just the water cooler running out of water. This is beyond water is wet as far as our thinking is concerned. That's not really the case. This is uncertain being uncertain. This is change being change. This is what it is. That's just it. There are times when we feel like we're hanging from our teeth from a branch dangling over a hungry tiger and with a swordsman at the base of the tree in front of us. Maybe we're standing on top of a flagpole with nowhere to go and we can hang on for as long as we can trying to impose order where there really isn't any. The baseline is still there. Baseline is constant change. The baseline is uncertain. So we can choose what we like and what we don't like. We can say, this is good, that's bad. 
it's not really good or bad. Reality doesn't need our validation to be what it is. Water is wet, fire is hot, ice is cold. Step off the flag pedal and help all beings. Unclench your jaw. On your way down, say, how may I help you? And save all beings. Take on the selfless act of realizing your true nature, your true Buddha nature. Return to the source that you never actually left. Help all beings, even in these uncertain times.